The time has finally arrived for Global to face the hardest three months of banners for anyone that has FOMO. Due to it being filled with back-to-back -back limited banners, the next three months also include the highest value banner to ever exist in the game with two of the strongest units in the game. For those of you that are collectors, I do hope you have prepared an adequate amount of savings or have prepared to rely on luck to get everyone. But let's see what the next three months has in store for us. Ella is the next upcoming banner and our first limited banner, so if you are sad because you were no longer able to pull an unlimited banner, worry no longer. Ella is a trap master that for all intents and purposes, is not really a trap master. Ella's first talent is the one that gives her mines and it gives her the bonus effect of when she is retreated, she used the effect on the mines on herself. Ella's mines are unique in that they work as proximity mines instead of traps that an enemy needs to step on, making mine placements much easier when compared to other trap masters. However, Ella is only able to hold up to 4 mines, and this is relevant for when we talk about her skills and how her mind works, so just keep that in mind. Ella's second talent, Bullseye, gives her attacks a 30% chance to deal 150% physical damage. This effect is guaranteed to activate against enemies affected by the mines. This plants Ella into the operator design philosophy of dealing lots of damage that we have seen for the last few months and will continue to see until the release of Ulpianus. It is a nice talent that gives her a nice damage boost that is guaranteed. Ella is an M6 candidate, but her main skill is her third. Bozak Tempest gains 40 ammo, reduces her attack interval, increases attack by 90%, and prioritizes enemies affected by the mines. Her mines gain the effect of slowing enemies and applying 35% fragile for 7 seconds, and she gains 2 mines once the skill ends. This skill can be manually deactivated. This skill makes Ella a damage dealing machine when used in conjunction with her mines. Her attack boost from skill, her guaranteed effect from her second talent, and the fragile application from her mines allow her to shred enemies very quickly. This is also the only way to replenish her mines, so you do have to be mindful of your mind count and you can't really spam them like with other trap masters. Luckily, her skill can be deactivated, so you could open stages by instantly activating and deactivating her skill to gain the most amount of mines. While that is one way to circumvent her low mine issue, Ella, with her mod, can just ignore mine since with the upgrade gives her a 50% chance to deal 170% physical damage, making her a pretty consistent high damage dealer with a fairly quick skill cycle of 34 seconds. Ascalon is the only break we have in the upcoming months since she's the only standard edition who suffers from being in the middle of three limited banners, despite Ascalon herself being a very good operator. Ascalon is the newest amateur, joining Mizuki after 3 years later. Ascalon's first talent, Death Detention, inflicts slow on enemies, and she also inflicts damage over time on her enemies which stacks up to 3 times. This talent is a nice amount of CC. Slowing enemies allows her to build up to her max stacks and deal a decent amount of extra damage with the damage over time. Ascalon's second talent, Light Devouring After Image, gives her 8 extra attack speed, and she gains an additional 6 attack speed if there are high tiles within the 4 adjacent tiles. This talent helps her overcome the slow attack interval that all ambushers have, which in turn lets her build her stacks much quicker. The high tile requirement is a bit clunky, but usually not too hard to set up, and is a nice bonus to have. Ascalon's main skill is her skill 2. Benefaction increases her attack by 130%, inflicts 60% slow to ground enemies within her attack range, and applies her first talent to nearby enemies when they die. This skill showcases the amazing utility Ascalon has in being a CC machine that doesn't rely on RNG binds of some sort. Ascalon with her mod provides even better slow, with her off skill being around 60% slow already. The damage increase is also a nice cherry on top. But the start of the show here is the slow utility Ascalon has while dealing a decent amount of damage, all at a very quick skill cycle of 20 seconds. Finally, after 4 years, a new elite operator joins as a playable character, and what a guy Logos is, because he finally dethrones Aya as the best cash in the game. Not only that, Logos is just straight up one of the best units in the game. Logos' first talent, Lexicon Evolution, gives Logos a 40% chance to attack another target at random within his attack range, dealing 60% arch damage and slowing them for 0.8 seconds. His talent is a nice way to get an extra bit of damage that provides an extra bit of CC. With his mod, this is improved to 60% chance, which lets him proc his talent very reliably. His second talent, Soul Shearing Tools, makes Logos' attack inflict minus 10 res, and increase the arch damage taken by 150 for 5 seconds. This talent lets Logos do even more damage and helps out his talent 1 when it procs by making the 60% arch do even more work. It also gives the benefit of helping any other arch damage dealers that may be on the stage with him. 
Logos is arguably an N9 candidate, and I'll briefly cover both his AFK skills and his big S3. His skill 1, Death, lands in the same vein as A Alter's skill 1. It is the AFK skill you will use 90% of the time. It increases his range and increases his attack by 100%. Anything with HP lower than 150% of Logos' attack will instantly be killed, and the remaining HP will be dealt as arch damage to a random enemy. There's not much to say, it's just a very good AFK skill that will deal with most enemies, and most importantly, those damage reduction slugs, since they just poof out of existence when they enter his range. His skill 3 is a bit more involved. Difference Horizon expands his attack range, increases his attack by 300%, and now attacks 4 targets simultaneously. He clearly reduces the speed of enemy projectiles within his range and clears all of them at the end of his skill. This skill just deals a lot of damage, especially with his mod at level 3. He's able to consistently proc Necrocious Fallout, adding even more damage on top of everything else. The slowing range projectiles is somewhat hard to fully utilize, but is a nice bonus to have and feels satisfying when it works out and all the projectiles disappear. Logos is just overall very good. Now, for the most part, if you've been keeping up with CN content, I don't think there's much for me to say here. She's just the best character in the game, meta-wise. To the point where comparing her to anyone else is just unfair, because it makes everyone else look terrible. So just how I did Dagon last time, there's no real need to go over her specifics besides a few points. 1. She gets camo with her sentinels that also serve as free double Ling Dragons to bait damage. And 2. Her skill 3 is all you need to beat every stage in the game. Just place her somewhere, wait 10 seconds, and then activate her skill, and watch everything just disintegrate that enters her range. Even aerial enemies. If you want her to be even better, get her to mod 3 and call it a day. She is that good. Regrettably. With the quick overview of kits done, it's now time to enter the polling section of this video. These next 3 months are filled with limited banners, namely the 2 collab banners and the 5th anniversary, giving people no real breathing room. It doesn't help that the end of this stretch is the best value banner we've ever had in Arknights, meaning if there's ever a banner to go 300 pulls on, it's probably this one, since it has 2 of the best units in the game, as well as having some of the best limited options to spark if you go 300. So let's get into pulling recommendation. As always, these are just my opinions, and at the end of the day, you should always pull for who you want and who will bring you the most joy. Going with CN release order, we start with Ella. Ella is a very high damage dealing unit that is more akin to an anti-air sniper than a trap master. With her access to on-demand fragile, massive damage, and by virtue of being a collab operator who we don't know if she will ever get a rerun, she lands at top priority. She will be an asset to your team if you choose to get her. Lumping her in in the same section, next is Ash. Ash shows her signs of being a much older design operator and falls behind in many aspects. The mod she gets on release of Ella's event is quite useful to her, but nothing game changing. She lands at low priority again, with the only reason to pull for her is for collection's sake, or if you're a sniper nice player, I guess. Next is Ascalon. She is unfortunately in between multiple limited banners, which hurts her viability to pull. Ascalon provides immense amounts of CC with her mod and is a very good unit. With limited banners competing for your pulls, Ascalon lands at the top of low priority. Again, this is not because Ascalon is an easily skippable operator, she has enough utility to warrant getting her, but she's the only breakpoint to where you can save for the next limited banner, which is unfortunately, for her, the best banner we've seen in Arknights at this moment in time. Finally, the unit that shares the limited banner lands in top priority. Logos fully earns this spot by being an absolute monster of a caster, dealing high amounts of damage while being easy to use. Since Wizardel was so strong, it was very much overshadowed how broken Logos himself is. He's by far the best caster in the game currently, and he's on the banner with the strongest unit in the game, so if you're going for him, you'll most likely bring home a Wizardel too. Speaking of her, the best unit in the game lands at top most priority, unsurprisingly. She breaks the game in half without sweating. She will wipe away any problems you might be having with stages. She brings new meaning to brute forcing your way through a stage. Wizardel lives in a league of her own. As always, I'll put the next 6 months without much context to give you an outline of what's to come. After the last 6 months being super heavily DPS focused, we see a philosophy change in operator design where there's much more focus on pairing units to make them reach max potential. 
or PP with Gladia, and Nymph with Arturia. This gives you an easy skip option if you're missing any of the unit pairs or just wish for operators that can stand alone. With the latest release of Summer Limiteds having happened in CN already, it is nice to see that there's no game breaking operators that you have to save for, which is good news since the Dungeon Meshi collab is just on the horizon. With all that said, I wish you luck on your pulls, subscribe if you like, and till next time.